Myself, Resolve, and Taron recently went to Munich High End, and you can watch our full coverage of that here, but whilst we were in Europe, we took a bit of a detour on the way back to the town of Lublinitz in Poland and had a look behind the scenes at Felix Audio. Hello, we are in the headquarters of Felix Audio. Uh, we gather here, here uh, together with headphones.com. So basically we, we do here the electronics assembly uh, plus the, the finishing, yeah. Basically this is the team, uh, Smartchin, from Patek. Mateusz is missing his package, but David, Pavel, Tahar, of Felix. How's the coffee? Some of the best on the trips. The people almost from the beginning of the company, they are still with, with us. We have very li little rotation uh, here. It's more like friends than like, you know, just coming to work and do, do your stuff and leave, leave home. Yeah, we can add also that, that the company was, was set up by our father. <laughs> which is on the picture. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't join today, but uh, this is a family business for us. So we, like uh, three brothers, Michal, Łukasz and, and uh, me, we are treating it like, like a hobby. Yeah, We no longer go together on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to hear about amplifiers on vacations. <laughs> Everything Felix makes is done here, from research and development, to circuit and PCB assembly, to the actual manufacture of the chassis themselves which, if you've seen products like the Envy before, you'll know are a bit different from the metal boxes that most amplifiers are built upon. When we are starting uh, thinking about new product, first we do the prototypes, then we prepare the casings. So this is the place where we keep ready-to-use cases. For example, this is the Euphoria, yeah? So we, we, we take it to the assembly process. So this is the first stage actually that we, we mount all the sockets on the stuff. All, all, all stuff is done manually. Also you design such an amplifier in a way like it's, it's a, a high frequency device. Yeah? Uh, that's very important how, how you secure uh, one, one uh, signal path from the other to make it don't interfere with each other. Uh, then we go through, for example, you can see also the echo. PCB, yeah. So this is like like an entire amplifier on, on, on one one board. Zahar and Pavel, the guys are uh, creating all the assembly PCB. The rest of the guys uh, who is doing the the final assembly, yeah. So we are splitting like this. Yeah, David is also helping uh, to make all these PCBs plus the cables. Yeah, uh, Mateusz is fighting with black piano finish. Uh, one of the toughest. Uh, task to do uh, here at this moment in our company. We are very, very proud to make it in Poland. This is Envy assembly once again. This is la one of the last stages. In the middle of all these stages, we have uh, particular testing phases. There is a lot of quality checks, quality controls and so on. Here Pavel is assembling the, the Envy internals and after it is finalized, it's getting into the heating and listening experience, testing and so on. We basically do not store anything in our storage, yeah? So it's on order, yeah? The feedback from the customers and uh, from social media is very important with the Envy, uh, with the LE, sorry. Uh, this was like the project uh, talked with the community. We have contacts with some team members uh, from the forums which, for example, get our prototypes yeah, for testing. Yeah? So then you can, you can say it's a community feedback. Yeah? We go the, to the yeah. woodworking. Let's do the woodworking. There will be very loud. <laughs> here's uh, the American Walnut, here's the Amazak, and here's the Merbau. No, it should be loud. Well, for a moment, it's yeah. okay. Yeah? This is David. Uh, he's taking care of wood carving. Right now we just stopped the process, but this is what we actually do here. Uh, at this moment he's um, preparing the front of the NV to be possible to put the front panel to. So let's start again. 
This is now we are preparing the front, uh, the top uh, casing, and after that we prepare the bottom casing. You can see there we have like um, ready uh, to ready to oil and sand cases uh, from different types of wood. Very loud. <laughs> after the CNC. Like the surface is very tough, very rough, uh, and needs lots of work. And the David, uh, the guy we met there, and I was talking that he is taking care of all the sanding and oiling. At least three, four hours to do one uh, case for NV. Is there, are there certain types of wood that are easier to work with, or is it like basically yeah. similar for all? Uh, oak uh, is much um, easier to work with. The walnut. Uh, you need to spend more time with it. Like what is important, the guys, all guys here are really enthusiasts, yeah? So it's not, not like they are doing only their job. They really, they are really into it, yeah? Also uh, tons of ideas and so on. Yeah, that, the team is creating the product finally, yeah? So that's, that's yeah. something we really try to invest into it, yeah? One really neat thing about everyone working at Felix Audio is that they are themselves audiophiles. Many other companies, whilst I'm sure people are proud of what they do, they might not go home from work and be into this outside of it. Whereas at Felix, apparently just as part of their interview process, they ask candidates, what's your experience in the audio hobby? What kind of products do you enjoy? What's your setup like? And so having a team of people that is not just good at what they do, but are audiophiles into this stuff, even outside of work, I thought was pretty cool. Maybe this is one thing we can show you. Drying we, of the wood, yes? Drying of the wood. It's a different story. Yeah, different story because we of the beginning. A, we have some fights about this. Yeah? <laughs> yes. it really is. Like all carpenters said, it's impossible to put that kind of wood on the amplifier which hits a lot. Right. You it, know, it, it, can was, be. it was bending, cracking, <laughs> and so bending, on. bending, cracking, yeah? everything. So it's like, uh, and after that, we were like uh, doing the brainstorm and thinking, what can we do? So we figure out new. I don't know it's new, but we, it's new at our company. It goes to our chamber. It uh, heats up to 45 degrees for two days at least. This. Yeah, this one. It's nothing special, but uh, <laughs> helps a lot. And after that, we put it off and put it to the, uh, I don't know how to say it, Even burning room, burning in room. Then we have the the warm plates. Yes, yeah, so which... we, we put like uh, 90 yeah. degrees, yeah? Something and we put like the this. We casing simulate here. The, the internal temperature of the amplifier. Yeah. Ah, so it simulates the amplifier. It's yeah? one more stage of heating, yeah. of burning in, uh, that, that we, we want to avoid uh, assembling a device and having it quite, quite finished. And then at the end, we see a crack or bend, yeah? We try to fail as quick as possible on yeah. those stages and uh, actually it's, it's, it's doing and quite a good job. Yeah. And after one or two days it is uh, ready to put on amplifier and after that process it also stays on the amplifier like, I don't know, another one or two, two days. Two days, yeah. yeah. Basically you're torture testing the wood before putting it on the amplifier so it doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And after that, when it all happens here, the casing never, uh, I don't know, bend or... Right. or, or, or um... No warping. No, yeah, 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 exactly. Clearly, quite a lot of attention to detail, QC, and interesting ways of overcoming some of the challenges of working with these materials are in use. But it's not just that. Felix also spends quite a bit of time testing and matching the tubes that are going to be put into amplifiers sent to customers. And they've even gone as far as to do things like building their own power regeneration setup, so that when they're testing amplifiers for QC, they can run them natively on foreign voltages, and when they're testing, any noise that might be present, or what they hear, or what they measure, they know is it due to the tube, is it due to the amp, or is it just down to dirty mains power? So basically what we're trying to do is we try to fail as quick as possible with all the parts, including the tubes as well. Yeah. Right. Here, for example, we are also measuring all the tubes, even though we buy the match spares, we measure it once again, we heat it up, then we measure it once again. Having a match tubes is, is quite important for channel imbalance, yes? so you, you, you want to have the signal uh, with the same strength on both channels, otherwise you will have some, not, not what the artist wanted to, to hear in, the, in, in his track. We also create our own current 
It's like up, upstairs, yeah. So we simulate the, the perfect sinusoid without the interference. And we have a silent room where we can test it just to avoid nothing gets from the mains, yeah. It's not yet finished, guys, but uh, it's, uh, it's the room where, where we could close it and in case we suspect the amplifier to have some interference. Power, yeah, like 120, sinus 230 and so on, yeah. The most sensitive headphones, we don't want to say. Yeah, advanced, like, but... like for example, we use the, the finals. Yes. We use also the Mesa 99s. Yet another pair we have already worn out. The Felix Brothers also gave us a bit of background information as to how they come up with new product ideas, many of which, as it turns out, are developed based on community feedback from things that they've done before. But sometimes it'll be something completely new, and apparently many of those ideas come from the Felix Brothers' father. Sometimes uh, our father is just, uh, he, he says, ah, I would do something new, I would do something new, yeah? Like the, with this 2A3 amplifier, yeah? So, uh, we, we said, no, no, we don't need a new amplifier right now. Ah, he, try it, yeah, try it, yeah. So he made it like, like during some weekends and so on, yeah. So try this one, yeah. So he's, he's also a lot of concepts are coming from him. Does he do this like overnight or like does he have these? He comes to his uh, workshop at like seven in the morning yeah. and leaves like 11 at night. So he comes to home for dinner. For food, yeah. Yeah, for food, of course. <laughs> Is this something that can be shown on camera at the moment or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the electrostatic amplifier. So we came into a conclusion that we need to do something different. Yeah. And uh, there were some customers who were actually asking, hey, do an electrostat amplifier. I like your sound signature and so on. Yeah. So basically our father uh, put here uh, uh, tons of hours into engineering. It's like a fifth version. And actually, I, I, I like it, yeah, because of the stage, because of the details. And this is also why we took it to to the Munich, yeah. yeah. I tried it at Munich, and it sounded bloody fantastic. Yeah, that that was the intention actually to get a feedback, guys, because you never know when you are doing something by your own. You never know where are you, yeah. You need to compare, but you also you can ask the guys. They will listen. They will give you feedback, but. Then the final customer is the guy who is who is matter who matters, yeah. Yeah. We we also spent tons of hours to analyze the the entire audio spectrum on the Envy to make it really clear. Like we we had some issues with 50 hertz. We have some issues in 100 hertz. We have a bunch of prototypes ready, yeah. So we are preparing a speakers amplifier, a Ooh, big yeah. one, a really big one, a huge. Uh, we are preparing a concept with two A3. Uh, tubes. I have it in the trunk. Every aspect we really put a lot of attention to make it a quality product that we really are proud of. That's that's what what is leading us. Uh, our main rule that our amplifiers should be completely neutral with a nice uh, tube signature. Sometimes people are believing that the tube tube arms be belong to the old world for a classical music and so on. And actually you can run everything on that yeah so uh also the the, the other myth is is like uh tube pumps are, are warm signature always and so on i we believe it it can be neutral yeah sometimes if we think that something is not possible we try to you know break the barrier and go further we thought it's okay and it, it's really nice but you know you, you always wait for the customers and uh, everyone else to to say and if everyone is saying and smiling, what else do we need? It was awesome to get a behind the scenes look of how things are made at Felix, their company culture, and how much of what they do is based on community feedback and involving other people outside of the company itself. A huge thank you to Felix for having us and showing us around. And if you are interested in a Felix amplifier for yourself, they are available at headphones.com. Or if you've got any questions about tube amps, music, gear, or anything else at all, come and say hey on our Discord server or the headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavor to help. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by headphones.com. Until next time.